They're killing for her. You see, liberty, the personification of liberty, requires blood. Because, friends, liberty is a god. And gods require blood. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. Ah, uh, hello my friends! Son of Sodas here! Today, I'm going to respond to a Christian tyrant, I mean a Christian truther, who apparently hates liberty and promotes tyranny. Get ready, because I'm going to get fired up in this video. You won't believe the garbage that comes out of this guy's mouth. You'll see what I mean. When we take a look at modernity, what we see is a revival of ancient gods. So in Rome, for example, there was the goddess Libertas. Libertas actually had her own Roman temple, and it was constructed on Aventine Hill in 238 BC. The goddess of liberty was worshipped by the ancient Romans. The goddess of liberty was worshipped, so was the goddess of democracy. Remember, we talked about Democratia, who was the Greek goddess of democracy. These are gods. Today we have the same thing. Nothing has changed. Everything continues on the same trajectory, except for the fact that we had a brief respite during this time of Christian monarchy, perhaps out of God's mercy, to slow down the train. Mercy? Are you joking? The age of Christian monarchy was a brutal time of oppression and persecution. It was an age where the common people had no rights, and the kings could persecute them as much as they pleased. Because, hey, apparently they had a divine right to do so. But things are now accelerating again, because now we have America, we have the West, that is all rooted. Listen to me, friends. The West, the modern Western ideals of democracy and liberty, these are not rooted in the Bible. These are not rooted... These are rooted in ancient Greco-Roman philosophies. These are rooted in goddess worship. These are rooted in pagan ideals. Wait, you mean the very idea of democracy came from a pagan society? Oh my gosh, I am so surprised! What a shock! I had no idea! Come on, my friend! It's not exactly a secret. This is common knowledge! Everyone with a basic education knows that democracy originated in ancient Athens. And later on it was adopted by the Roman Republic. And later on it was adopted by the United States who was inspired by the Republic of Rome. Come on, my friend, this is common knowledge. Everyone knows this. And yes, I'm well aware that these things are not rooted in the Bible. Because honestly, okay, I'm going to get a lot of flack for saying this. But I'm going to say it anyways. The very values of the Bible conflict with our very values of liberty. That's right, I said it. Our very modern American values of liberty and freedom are in conflict with what the Bible says. Because honestly, the sad truth is Christianity tends to conflict with our modern values. In the Bible, there is no freedom of religion. Because if you converted to another religion, you would be put to death. There is no freedom of speech either. Because if you say something against the Christian God or against the religion, you are stoned to death for blasphemy. And according to the Bible, women have to submit to their husbands, and the husband's supposed to rule over their wives. Now, I know that many conservatives like to claim that America is based on Judeo-Christian values, but when you really look into it, it's simply not the case. When you look at the Bible, there is no freedom of religion or freedom of speech. The very book is at odds with our own modern values. I know it's a little controversial to say this, but it's simply the truth. Our very values of liberty go against what the Bible preaches. So the idea of liberty, freedom for the slaves, so to speak. What do you mean, so to speak? Freedom for the slave is freedom for the slave. This was a goddess that was worshipped in Rome. Now that is not... This goddess Libertas is not Jesus. She's not God. Why, of course she's God. She's the very goddess of liberty. But she is an idol to an ideal that the Romans loved. 
They love the idea of having their own liberty. Forget God. They don't need God for this. They'll have their own liberty. And it's a goddess. They represent her as a goddess. They simply make a statue for themselves. Yes, and she represents and embodies liberty. Forget God? Uh, Jerry, you do realize that the Romans didn't believe in the Hebrew God, right? The Romans didn't believe in Yahweh. For the Romans, these were their gods. So now they have liberty. Now they can have liberty without having to go up to the great spirit in the sky and to deal with him or have to repent of any sins, forget any of that. We just simply have a idol that we can you know, offer our child to or offer food to or pray to, and she'll bring us liberty, and she'll provide liberty. Why would the Romans go to a god they don't even believe in? The Romans did not believe in Yahweh. They didn't believe in the Hebrew God. Genius. So the Statue of Liberty in New York is a modern homage to the ancient goddess Libertas. It is the same exact thing. We see, by the way, this concept all over the place as we see the revolutions uh, brewing in the 1700s. In the 1700s, we finally have the Renaissance uh, giving rise to revolt against Christian monarchy. Remember, Christian monarchy is the target of revolution. In France, in America, the target, the bullseye, is placed upon the monarchies. It is not placed upon something else. It is placed specifically upon Christian monarchy. Oh, gee, I wonder why. Maybe it's because the Christian monarchs were the ones who were oppressing them. Genius! Uh, monarchy. Whenever the American revolutionaries were shooting British Christians, they were fighting against Christian monarchy to establish a new form of liberty. But this new form is actually an old form. It's the form that was created in the Greco-Roman world. Yes, because at this time, people were questioning the very need of a king or a monarch. And why wouldn't they? It was the monarchy and the church that were oppressing them all this time. And they wanted to find a better system. During the Renaissance, Europe was coming out of the Dark Ages. Europe was coming out of the time where kings and queens could do whatever the heck they wanted to the common people with no consequences. Europe was coming out of the feudal system, a system where the people were SLAVES to the nobility. And Europe was coming out of a time where the church could burn someone at the stake as a heretic because they disagreed with them. It was called the Dark Ages for a reason, my friend. And honestly, my friend, there's one thing you're forgetting about the American Revolution. You're forgetting the fact that King George sent his redcoats here to kill us! We were defending ourselves! Genius! So here we have a picture of Marianne. Marianne is the goddess of liberty the national personification of France. And here you have a very popular image, Liberty Leading the People, by Eugene uh, Delacroix and from 1830. This original hangs in the Louvre. But uh, what you may not know is that during the French Revolution, Notre Dame, you've, you've heard of this, uh, no doubt, the cathedral in Paris, was turned into a temple of reason. And for a time, Lady Liberty replaced the Virgin Mary on several altars. This was very revealing. This was a rejection of Mary and Jesus. This was a rejection of monarchy. This was a appeal to man. This was a humanistic revolution. This was an appeal to reason. This was a uh, movement away from faith towards reason. And this, of course, you need to see that the target was Christian monarchy. The target was, were the ideals espoused in the Bible. Yes, that's because the Christian monarchy and the church were the ones in power. They were the ones who were oppressing and killing people. Of course! Honestly, my friend, are you really this ignorant of history? Oh, so they were moving more towards reason? Well, good! And you have to remember, it was the French monarchy who was extorting and taxing the people to death. The French nobility were living a lavish lifestyle, constantly partying, drinking, and feasting. And all while the common people of France were literally on the streets, starving to death! In uh, Britain, 
we have uh, something very similar. And, and by the way, you can literally find this in virtually every country. Every country has a national personification, usually a woman. In this case, Britannia. You can see her holding a nice cup here uh, with a beast next to her. Uh, and she is the uh, British version of this lady, this lady who brings liberty. Uh, her name, uh, Britannia. But by the way, Britannia was the Roman name for Britain way, way, way back. That, that name goes way back. But uh, Britannia is the name of uh, the, the British version. You know, New Zealand has their own, Zealandia. I mean, you can go through and to see all of the different versions. But my point is, is that the personification of liberty, the personification of freedom, is always a woman, not Jesus, okay? It's not Jesus. It's not Jesus. Yes, that's because the world does not revolve around your Jesus. The world does not revolve around your religion. It's a woman. And what do you do for this woman? What are you supposed to do for this woman? Well, look in the picture you can see. They're, they're killing for her. You see, liberty, the personification of liberty, requires blood. Now, why is that the case? Because, friends, liberty is a god. And gods require blood. Are you freaking kidding me? Really? That's what you're trying to argue? You're claiming that Libertas is demanding human sacrifices? You've got to be kidding me! Of all the BS I've heard, this takes the cake! If you want liberty, the way America presents liberty, you must kill. That is why American liberty is not a gift from God. Does, unless you believe that God requires you to kill for his gifts, then it cannot be from God. American liberty cannot be from God if it requires you to kill for it. That's not how God op We know that. We know that from the Bible. We know from the Bible that that's not what God would have us do. God would not have us kill to spread liberty. That's not how it works. Everybody who has read the Bible knows that. Really, throughout the entire Bible, Yahweh has commanded his people to kill, kill, kill. The God of your own Bible has commanded his followers to massacre entire cities. He has commanded his followers to kill their own family, kill their brothers, kill their sisters. And let's not forget your own Jesus gave himself up as a blood sacrifice. Really, your God's obsessed with blood sacrifices and you're trying to lecture us? You hypocrite. And besides, our gods don't ask us to kill anyone. That's not how liberty works. He who the sun sets free is free indeed. But you don't have to kill to bring that liberty, do you? Unfortunately, my friend, we do. Because honestly, do you honestly believe that a tyrant's just gonna let his people go? No, a tyrant would do everything to keep his people controlled, to keep his subjects, well, subjugated. Do you honestly believe that a tyrant's just gonna let his people go free? Because if he lets his people go free, he's not gonna have control over them anymore. And if some people try to break free, he's gonna execute them to set as an example. The only way to break free from a tyrant is to revolt against him. And when people break free from the tyrant, he's gonna send his soldiers and massacre them. So yes, we have to kill his soldiers. If we wanna be free, we have to fight them. Because freedom is worth dying for. Let me tell you something, my friend. A wise man once said, I prefer violent freedom over peaceful slavery. And he was right, because a life of peaceful slavery is no life at all. Oh, he who the sun sets free is free indeed, right. That's why people were enslaved under the system instead. There was no freedom. These people had no rights. And so we must be talking about a very different liberty. And this liberty is represented by a woman who demands blood and who happens to be a goddess, a well-known goddess throughout history, who was suppressed during the time of Christian monarchy 
but was revived in the time of the Renaissance. Yes, and back in those days, the church would tell the people that if they rebelled against the king, they were rebelling against God. Because hey, God gave them the divine right to rule. <laughs> and since the king had a divine right to rule, he could oppress his subjects as much as he wanted. So under Christian monarchy, tyranny was accepted, as long as you followed the Christian God. However, under paganism, it was taught that you didn't have to be pushed around by a tyrant. If a tyrant was oppressing his people, it was fine to rise up against him. You see, paganism teaches us that we don't have to let people step on us. We don't have to let tyrants push us around. So yes, if we have to, we will fight for our freedom. Rebirth. New ideas that are actually old. There is no new thing under the sun. That which was shall be done. So we have today gods masquerading for our philosophies. Now we tend to look back at ancient cultures and we say, Oh, they worship wooden idols. We look in the Old Testament, well, God's always mad at these people worshiping wooden idols. And what are these wooden idols? Well, many people would take wooden idols, you know, local community gods, the uh, domestic gods, and they would put them on their mantles or near their hearth, and they would pray to them daily or offer something to them, food to them, drink to them, whatever the case might be. And we may look back at that and say, oh, how silly. Oh, how silly. We would never do that. We don't have any gods today. Those old people had gods. Those ancient people had gods. We don't. We don't have any gods. Are you joking me? You think the Bible is completely irrelevant, if, if that's the truth. Actually, yes, I do think it's irrelevant, because I don't follow it. Men do not change. Men still worship gods. They still have gods. You shall make no image of anything in heaven, anything below heaven, anything on the earth. Second commandment. And we say, well, let's put the Ten Commandments up on the wall. You shall have no other gods before me, the very first one. But that's not true because we want to kill for everybody's right to worship any god they want to because of liberty, see? Yes, because the world does not revolve around your Bible. We are not governed by your Ten Commandments. It doesn't matter what they say. They're not the law. Really. <laughs> you thought I was joking when I said this guy promotes tyranny. Yep, yes really. As you see, he is actually promoting tyranny. He truly hates liberty. <laughs> well, that's the end of this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. And please, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe.